In our previous videos, we've seen a while and a do while loop. In this video, we're going to take a look at a for loop, or more specifically, a for each loop. The difference between a for loop and a while or a do while. The while and do while, we generally don't know in advance how many times it's going to execute. But the for loop, we have a test at the beginning that generally is going to iterate over a fixed number of times. So we know in advance how many times it's going to run. The advantage of this kind of loop is it's very good if we are iterating over a collection or something of the like. So we'll go ahead and grab our start lozenge here, say start. And what we're going to do is we're going to process a collection of cars. We have not made that collection yet, but we're going to. So I'm going to simply say, is there another car in the collection? Okay. And then we'll have a yes and a no path. Okay, if so, I'm going to say select the next car. Okay, in the collection. And then after that, another process that's going to say, uh, maybe we'll say run the car a given distance. Okay, and this is going to be kind of interesting with the arrows. So start, is there another car in the collection? This will be our yes arrow. Let me see if I can click and get a label on that. Yes. Okay, S select the next car. Uh, let me enhance that a bit. Select the next car, save it into an iteration variable. So an iteration variable is a very temporary variable used to just hold an item for one iteration of the loop, for one run through the loop. Run the car a given distance, and maybe we'll even say print the output after running. Okay, and we'll draw some arrows here like so. Okay, now after this, what are we going to do? Well, we are going to go back and execute the loop one more time. Actually, I'll tell you what, let me drag it over this way. See, so see, this is interesting. There we go. Okay, this is interesting because the loop test is at the top. When we're finished running the loop, we simply go up and run the test again. But you know what? We still haven't handled, delete that guy, we still haven't handled the no condition to come out of this test. So for the no, we're simply going to say, okay, we're all done, end. We could maybe move on with the program and print something else, but let's make it simple. And let's say if the answer is no, there are no more cars to process, then we're done. And that's essentially what a for or for each loop looks like. So back into NetBeans now, and let me focus on this. And you'll see we've already created a do while loop where we're prompting for multiple cars. So the next thing that we need is a collection of cars. In other words, picture a garage with multiple spaces or a parking garage with multiple spaces. That's what we need to make. And this is going to be a new construction called an array list. So we'll say array list. Now we need a generic identifier, which is a less than and greater than symbol. And in between that, we need to say what we're going to store in this array list. And I'm going to store a vehicle, like so. Array list vehicle, all vehicles, equals new array list. And then we just do what's called the diamond operator. And uh, parentheses, like so. Okay, one moment. Okay, cannot find symbol, that's easy to fix. A simple alt enter and add import will work. And there we go, it finds the array list. And if we take a look up above, it's added an import statement for our array list. Okay, so a comment here, this array list will contain all of the vehicles that we create. Okay, now down below, once I have created a vehicle, I'll put some comments to this effect. Once I have created a vehicle, store it in our collection. Okay, so I'm going to say all vehicles dot add, and then we'll simply say my vehicle. Why my vehicle? Well, notice that my vehicle is this variable we've declared here on line 31. We have assigned it to a new uh, a new object, assign a new object to it on line 38, and then we're assigning our values to that my vehicle, the gallons of gas, miles per gallon, and the odometer. Okay, that well, looks like I misspelled it just slightly. Vehicle, just
just like so, and we're good. That's all we need to do to store a variable in my vehicle. Uh, I'm sorry, in the array list. Now, what do we have? Okay, enter distance to travel. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to iterate over all of the vehicles in our collection and run them the given distance. Okay, now a typical for each, uh, a typical for loop looks like this, for, and then we have what's called a declaration statement, int i equals zero. Then we have a comparison, which is the test that's gonna run each time we run the for loop, i less than, um, let's see, what are we doing? It is all vehicles dot size. Okay, then an increment part, i plus plus, and the increment happens each time we loop. Now what I would do here is say all vehicles dot get, and then I'm gonna pass in that counter variable. The counter variable is the i that we have up here. All vehicles dot get i, and then control shift v to assign that, whoops, on the get part that is, control shift v to assign that to a new car called this vehicle. Okay. That's how a for loop typically looks. And then we can take all of this and we can move it into that for loop. But there is a shortcut. If you're iterating over a collection, you don't have to type all this out. Watch this. It's called a for each loop. And in NetBeans, we do it simply like this. F-O-R-E and then tab. And you see the F-O-R-E tab, the lines that have been created here are identical, nearly identical to the lines that are created here. The only thing I need to specify is the name of that iteration variable. Remember that an iteration variable is a very temporary variable that's just meant to represent the current item in a collection for one single run through a for loop, through a for block. So, uh, so basically, if we have five items in a collection, the first time we run, it's going to be item number zero, next time item number one, then two, three, and four, and then it's all done. So this vehicle represents a different vehicle every time we iterate over this loop, every time we give it one pass through. Okay, all that being said, we're now ready to take all of the work that we're doing here, that we are, we're previously doing just once at a time, and move it into our for loop here. Alt-Shift-F, remember that's our best friend in NetBeans. It will do a little bit of reorganizing for us and put the tabs just right. I don't really need this longer for loop, so I'm going to comment it out. I just wanted to show that in lieu of doing this, we can save a whole lot of typing by doing it this way. Okay, so now what we're doing, uh, I need to change all the references here from my vehicle to this vehicle. So just a moment as we do that. Okay, and then we'll say this vehicle, this vehicle to string. Let's see. So while uh, all system out print line will say before, okay, and then we'll turn this one to after. So we can see before and after for each of our vehicles. Okay, and then save. Let's run this now, and what we should see is that we can input multiple vehicles, and then we can watch the output for those vehicles as well. So driver, first time through I'm going to run. If you're satisfied with the video at that point, you're welcome to say, okay, I've seen enough. Second time through, I'm going to debug so we can watch it happen in slow motion. So run. Okay, for the first vehicle, gallons of gas 10, miles per gallon 10, odometer uh, 10,000. Do you want to create another? Yes. For the second vehicle, gallons of gas 20, miles per gallon 20, odometer 20,000. Do you want to enter another? Yes. For the third vehicle, gallons of gas 30, miles per gallon 30, and odometer 30,000. That way we can remember that I've done three different vehicles, the 10s, the 20s, and the 30s. And finally, on this loop, we'll choose no. We don't want to enter more vehicles. So now it's going to say, okay, how far do we want to go? We'll say 100 miles on each of the vehicles. And now we should see three distinct blocks, one for each vehicle. Each one has a before and an after. So before gallons of gas 10, odometer 10,000, we run it 100 miles at 10, uh, 10 miles per gallon. It's going to leave us with 
10 gallons of gas consumed, so zero gallons in the tank. Odometer, 10,100. For the 20s vehicle, okay, at 20 miles per gallon, that's going to consume five gallons of gas. So we see gallons of gas is 15. Odometer, 20,100. For the 30s car, uh, 10 divided by 30 is going to be about 3.333 gallons of gas. So it looks like we did a little bit of rounding there. Took it to 27 and the odometer of 30,100. So what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to run a cut, run this again with some break points. And by the way, thank you for sticking with me. And you see now we're in the first do loop. So I'm going to choose F8. And we've seen this before. So enter gallons of gas, we'll say 10. Okay. And then I'm going to F8, F8, F8. Okay. Uh, I don't need this validation breakpoint anymore. I know we've seen that. So I'm going to go ahead and snap that one off just to save us a bit of time. Miles per gallon, 10. Okay, F8, F8, F8. Okay, odometer, uh, 10,000. Okay, F8, F8. Do you want to create another vehicle? Yes. Now, what's the value of this create another variable? Let's see. It happens to be zero. Uh, but like I said, that, that value is irrelevant as long as it matches this value, which is a constant. That's fine. If that's true, if the two match, then F8. We go back to the top and we prompt again. Gallons of gas 20, F8, F8. Miles per gallon 20, F8, F8. Odometer 20,000. <coughs> and F8, F8. Create another, we'll say yes. Okay, F8 to loop again. Gallons of gas 30. Okay, F8, F8, F8. Miles per gallon 30. F8, F8. Odometer 30,000. Okay, now I'm going to slow down just a moment on this all vehicles ad. Take a look here at all vehicles. Do you see how currently we have a zero and a one? That represents the first two cars that we've added once we executed this line right here. Now, we haven't executed this line for the third vehicle yet, which is why we only see two vehicles in it. But here's again what's cool about the debugger. I'm going to expand the zero and expand the one and you can see the individual values for our first car, the tens car, and our second car, the twenties car. Now, watch what happens. I'll collapse these up. Watch what happens when I F8 over this line. F8. And you see now we've added a third vehicle. Now we start counting with zero. So the third vehicle is actually vehicle number two. And you see this one is the thirties vehicle. Okay. So F8. Do you want to create another? No. Now, create another, because I chose no, it no longer is equal to J option pane, yes option. So F8 takes us to the next step where we say enter distance to travel and we say 100. Okay, now we go to the for loop. And remember, this is going to execute once for each item in the all vehicles collection. You see now we have three items. Okay, so I'm going to choose F8. And the first one is going to be stored in this vehicle on the first iteration. Let's take a look at what is stored in this vehicle. And you see it's the TENS vehicle. So we take the TENS vehicle, we tell it to go a given distance, and then we print out the state afterwards. Loop again because we have another vehicle to visit. Okay, now wh which vehicle is this vehicle this time? This vehicle is now the 20s vehicle because this is our second go through this loop. Okay, execute everything we want, and then we go to the top again. And what's our third vehicle? Should be no surprise, the third vehicle is the 30s vehicle. Now let me slow down on this line 78. I've been pressing F8 so far, which just executes the method. But let me choose F7 now, which steps into the method. Take a look at the top. Do you see the tab that's highlighted is vehicle.java? You probably remember this computation that we did a while ago where we computed the uh, distance, the gas consumed, and the distance to add to the odometer. Right now, it's going to run these calculations, but it's going to run these calculations based on the values of that third vehicle, which is 30 gallons of gas, 30 miles per gallon, and 30,000 miles on the odometer. So this operation is only running for the third vehicle, not for one and two. And why is that? That's because the go method is non-static. 
In other words, we have to call it on a specific object. We cannot call it on the class itself. So F8, F8. And finally, our program finishes up, and I can choose F5 to tell it I'm all finished debugging. Thank you very much. And then we can take a look at the output, and we should be able to see the same output that we got before when we did a run of it with play, which is the 10 vehicles goes to zero gas, uh, 10,100 miles. The second one, 15 gallons of gas, 20,100. And the third, 30,000 uh, goes to 30,100, uh, 30, and gallons of gas goes down to 27. So this has been a look at the for and the for each loop, which are ideal if you know in advance how many times you wish to iterate. I hope this has been helpful, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.